The previous videos have shown you how to use the meta-analysis packages Ginger Ale and SDM. Today, we'll learn how to conduct quicker meta-analyses using the web-based programs Neurosynth and NeuroQuery. Neurosynth, for example, is able to extract data from over 14,000 studies to generate a meta-analysis in a matter of seconds. To use Neurosynth, first go to neurosynth.org and click on the Meta-Analysis button at the top of the screen, and then select Terms. You will see an alphabetical ordering of all the different terms that Neurosynth has identified in the abstracts of its database. And you can use a search box to look for any term that you want. For example, let's say that we wanted to look at studies that use the term pain. If we search for pain and click on this result that appears, you will generate a map showing which voxels are most likely to be activated by studies that examine pain. In this case, voxels in the dorsal anterior cingulate and anterior bilateral insula. The results are displayed on an MNI brain, and the XYZ coordinates of your crosshairs are shown below the orthogonal viewing windows. You may enter your own coordinates as well. You can change other aspects, such as the color palette, whether to display positive or negative effects, the opacity, thresholding, and others. You can reset these to whatever values you want, and you can also choose whether you want to display the crosshairs or the labels on the orthogonal slices. These changes will be applied to whichever image is highlighted in the Layers panel. This panel is also important for interpreting the meta-analysis results that are displayed. At the bottom is the anatomical layer, which is the MNI brain that we mentioned previously. The other two layers contain the search term that you used, followed by the labels Association Test and Uniformity Test. Uniformity tests are similar to the meta-analyses described in the previous videos in that they show how consistently an effect is reported in a given voxel. Association tests, on the other hand, control for whether a given voxel or region is activated across a range of different terms. For example, many studies report activity within the dorsal anterior cingulate not just in response to pain, but also in response to conflict, cognitive control, surprise, and other phenomena. Consequently, the association map for a given term will display voxels that show more consistent activation for studies using that term compared to studies that do not. The eye icon next to each layer can be used to either display or hide that layer. The default is to display both the association test and the anatomical image while hiding the uniformity test, indicated by a slash mark on top of the eye. Layers can be removed by clicking on the trash can icon or downloaded by clicking on the download icon. These downloaded maps can then be used as masks for an ROI analysis, either as they are or by creating a sphere around the peak of the map. Here I'm demonstrating how to do that in AFNI. First, I open up the AFNI viewer and I overlay the meta-analysis map on an MNI template brain. I then change the threshold slider to focus in on the highest meta-analysis overlap in the anterior cingulate. And then find that cluster, note the coordinates of that peak activation, and then use it with a command like 3D undump to create a 5 millimeter sphere around the coordinates of that cluster. You can then use this for any kind of ROI analysis on separate fMRI data that you've collected. Although Ginger Ale and Neurosynth are very good at finding the overlap among studies for search terms, these terms are often restricted to single words and moreover to words that occur frequently in the neuroimaging literature. What if we wanted to perform a meta-analysis on a more complicated phrase, such as self-referential processing, or what if we wanted to use a relatively rare term, such as prosopagnosia? 
These questions were addressed in a new online meta-analysis tool called NeuroQuery, which emphasizes prediction for a given search term or phrase instead of calculating the overlap from studies that have already been published. Take the search term prosopagnosia, for example. There are only a handful of studies which have studied prosopagnosia using neuroimaging, which means there are not enough to run an effective meta-analysis. With NeuroQuery, however, this limitation can be overcome by analyzing the full text of each article, as opposed to just the abstract, and then by using a technique called semantic smoothing to add weight to semantically related terms. This generates predictive maps of voxels that are expected to be associated with a certain cognitive process, such as prosopagnosia, which would be otherwise impossible with conventional meta-analysis. Similar to Neurosynth, you go to neuroquery.org and type a search term into the query box. Then click on Generate Brain Map, and a few seconds later, Neuroquery will display a predictive map of that search term on an MNI brain. Below the query box, you will see the search terms that were used to generate the map, along with the relative weight given to each one. In addition, related terms are shown below in the expansion field, and you can hover your cursor over any of these terms to see a preview of what the predictive map would look like. The orthogonal views can also be switched by clicking on the Swap View button, and the color and transparency of the map can be edited by clicking on the heat map box below the viewing panes. For example, you can change the transparency and change from red to green overlay. Lastly, you can download these maps by clicking the Download Map button below the viewing pane. You can then load this in the software package of your choice, determine where the peak is, and create a sphere around it like we did with the map from Neurosynth. We will complete our survey of meta-analysis by learning how to use Nymare, a Python-based software package.